So apparently there's a surge of online, like, Pierre Polyev bots. Uh, CBC reported this, but we can we can investigate ourselves because obviously CBC isn't the most trustful source. The NDP wants Canada's media. elections commissioner to look into online bots backing conservative leader Pierre Polyev. They say if conservatives are paying for social media posts, they should be considered third party advertising. If not, they could be examples of foreign interference. There's basically duplicate messages flooding social media, the exact same message from people that seem to be having addresses around the world. Uh, that is a sketchy behavior and we need to know what it's about. This after Press Progress noted hundreds of identical social media posts saying they were, quote, buzzing from the energy of a Polyev rally in Northern Ontario last week. Some of the posters are located in countries like France, England, and Russia. The Conservative Party sent CBC... Do you hear how he said Russia? <laughs> Russia. Russia. <laughs> like... Iran and China. Settle down. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God, the Cold War never fucking ended. It never ended. Oh, no, it didn't. And it's so funny because, like, like, communism was not perfect, and there was definitely things that they failed about. But, like, the amount of lying that clearly continues to go on and on is just, <laughs> it's like, you're like, I'm not going to believe anything now. Like, they can't even get the right acronym for China's government. They keep yeah. calling it the CPP. It's the CPC. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. I don't even know why they do this anymore. Because, like, straight up, like, y'all got what you wanted. USSR fell. Russia's now capitalist. And you're still doing this shit. I just, like... And I feel like Canada leans way more into like this is Russian propaganda. I feel like America's way more like, oh my god, China. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, that. And, and you're you're right though. And it it's getting it's excessive. And it, it has been for years. And you can like I kind of noticed really on early on in my life that it was happening. And I started noticing most in sporting events. Like the way they would talk about in the Olympics or even the world juniors and, oh, Russian junior team is so bad. And I'm like, they do the exact same thing as the Canadian team, but it's somehow way worse. Mm hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> big time. And I mean, I remember all like the accusations of like cheating or all that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, guys, come on. Like, maybe clean up your own home first. But mm -hmm. yeah. anyway, they got a quote here. The statement that reads in part, the CPC does not pay for bots and has no idea who is behind these accounts. We are seeking the support of actual Canadians as witnessed by large in-person turnouts at our events. We remain very concerned about any foreign interference and call upon the government to release anything that it might know. So, do possible bot posts supporting Canadian politicians need more scrutiny? It's time to bring in the power panel. Cameron Ahmed is a former head of communications to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Lisa Raitt is a former Conservative cabinet minister. And Emilie Nicolas is a columnist for Le Devoir. Can we pause it for one Welcome second? to the show, everybody. Yeah. Okay. This is a prime example of the Joseph Goebbels playbook. Mm-hmm. The Liberals and to the extent the NDP are claiming Conservatives are doing this. We, we know for years the Liberals and Democrats in the States have been doing the same thing. How many times mm -hmm. have we joked about all these posts all of a sudden lining up? We've seen those videos where they do the newscast, where it's just like a timeline of every newscast, and it's all in sync. They're saying the exact same sentences, the exact same words. So yeah, that just I just wanted to point out how this was an example of accusing yeah, others of what you yourself are guilty of. Of course, and I mean, I was I'm glad you uh, pointed that out because uh, you beat me to it. I was going to say, like, you know, that is a similarity to American politics, mm -hmm. which is. Um, 
<clears throat> that is a similarity to American politics. Whereas, uh, whereas essentially what you do is you, um, you do a thing and yeah, it's a classic Joseph Goebbels play of, it's not even accuse the other side of doing the thing you're doing. It's that everybody's doing these things. They're all doing them. And th they just accuse each other back and forth. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. I pointed out before, tons of examples of the Liberal Party doing this, of, uh, you know, in the States, they got the big money. They got those big paid propagandists mm -hmm. like Dash Dabrowski or like Harry Sisson, the like <laughs> DNC shills who are out there just like, or like, you know, for conservatives, you got like Cat Turd and all these other things where they're just shilling for their, for their team. Like hardcore. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this isn't this isn't surprising. Also, when they're talking about like different, just a quick note, when they're talking about different like locations, do these people understand what a, a, a VPN is? Because a lot of people use VPNs. That means it's going to look like you're in a different location. And a lot Don't of VPNs. Tell China about the VPNs. They'll start to get on the internet. They'll start trolling mm. people. What if China finds out about this? Not yeah, really. The Conservatives also pointed out some bot accounts seem to support Justin Trudeau, though the Liberal Party says it does not use or interact with there online bots. But Cameron, what's your take on this bigger question as raised by the NDP of whether the Elections Commissioner should investigate this? Well, I think they're they're probably right. I mean, and Mr. Singh is right when he says it's sketchy. It's obviously strange, and it's obviously also concerning for our democratic process when you have this type of manipulation occurring on social media uh, to such a large scale. I think if the Conservative Party wants to show that it takes it seriously, then they would say well, that they do the and actually try and do something about it, at, try mm -hmm. and get accountability from the social media websites uh, or participate in a process to try and figure out and get down to the bottom of it. Um, and also try and work with the government on the online harms bill, which actually I believe had a, uh, a section devoted to trying to get accountability over bot farming and the presence of these types of accounts online. It's not a good thing for democracy when you have this level of mani manipulation. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know how to shut them down. Uh, and as we get closer and closer to an election, we need to have stronger processes and accountability for political parties if they have any role in uh, farming these kinds of accounts. There is an official term for this. It's called astroturfing. It refers to the use of these uh, <laughs> robotic accounts to fake what appears to be grassroots support for a politician or a political party. It's not limited to any one movement, and some experts say it's been going on for years. So Lisa, what's your take on whether the Conservatives should agree and call on the Elections Commissioner to, to investigate this activity? Why is it up to the Conservatives? Like, guys, let's get serious here. Do we honestly think that the Conservative Party is buying these bots? No, they're not. Yes. 100%. I'm sorry. You can't just ask that question and expect people to be like, well, now that she asked, like, does anybody think this political party is actually engaging in this, in this kind of in this kind of behavior? Yes, absolutely. And I just like to say it is incredible that we're watching our media. Like Javier pointed out, discover the 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 phenomenon of troll farms. This is like a, this is like a real discovery. <laughs> they're like, they're like, Oh my God. Astroturfing. They call it like you guys live in the ocean. This has been happening for a long time now. Does it, like nobody, you guys like, don't know like about NAFO or at all. You don't remember the Hillary bots that, harassed everybody in 2016. This has been no, going on for a while, guys. People. Those were real <laughs> people with real feelings. Wait, you mean John 86484 <laughs> wasn't a wasn't a, a grassroots supporter of the checks notes I, Hillary Clinton I, campaign? <laughs> I thought it was that it was just how they spelled Jonathan now. It's creative spelling. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. I just... So I was gonna say, um, 
in, in, as we were talking about propaganda, so the term public relations, the guy who named it that was Edward Bernays. And he specifically said, he's like, I'm just renaming propaganda. That was so when you hear <laughs> public relations in the West Western world, they are literally just saying propagandist. That is all they're saying. That's great, though. If you think about that term, that's really clever. Public yeah. Oh, yeah, relations. No. Oh, yeah. The first time I, I was watching some YouTube video about it, and I was just like, that man was a genius. Son of a bitch, but a genius. Hey, game recognized game. That's yeah, great. Exactly. Just, it's like you're just. Don't you're hate just the play, hate the game. <laughs> well, the thing is, they just change. They've been doing this. They've been doing this forever. They just changed the term. They just changed the term. So instead of like, you remember, you remember alternative facts? They're like, (laughs) they started talking about alternative facts. That just lies people. That's all that is. There's no such thing as an alternative fact. It's 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 a alternative truth. What? It's an Ouroboros <laughs> statement. It eats itself. There can't be an alternative fact. There's just a fact and a and a falsehood. What kind of so, statement did you call it? And Ouroboros. So an Ouroboros, okay. Ouroboros is like a snake eating its own tail. Um, oh, okay. That makes that makes sense. Yeah. It's it's like a it's one of these nonsense terms where for some reason just like it's linguistically it takes on but you know like when you just think about it for a second you're just like what wait what is an alternative fact yeah let's see what uh this is a fake truth excuse me I don't believe that's a thing exactly anyway let's see what uh this this lady who <laughs> I love the pauses um, I don't think I, I think already she's probably not doing a great job here but let's see not. they said they're not they're not doing it what we do have is a serious concern about foreign of intervention in any elections well, should they call America. for somebody to investigate it from that angle then she's got Hillary Clinton why not cards. I mean that's okay but look this is grandstanding by Charlie Angus no no question in my mind he's writing a letter to the elections commi- commissioner he's trying to get some ink around his outrage around it this is a serious issue if, if the parties want to deal with foreign interference they should deal with it head-on and they should deal with it together instead of the grandstanding trying to score political points off of one another and a pox on all the parties quite frankly on this one because it's a serious matter and Canadians do actually care about foreign interference they care about it a lot but this notion of pointing fingers and saying that it's the conservative party that are hiring bots from russia and from france that is not helping overall the big issue that we have facing us together as a democracy and then finger pointing and saying well the conservatives aren't rushing quickly Hmm? she's not wrong like in an essence what she's saying but she's still just playing her part is the problem i mean yeah and I'm sorry, this is, a, this is just a little bit of, like, she doth protest too much. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, look at, look at her face. Look at that right yeah. there. She's like, really upset like, over this. I don't disagree that it needs, it's something that should be talked about, but it's like, at the same time, you're just BSing for the sake of BSing. Yeah. And it's a lot of wanted to, they should have talked about this seven years ago instead of just yelling Nazi at everyone. Yeah, pretty much. That's uh, enough into saying that this is a wrong thing. That again is a red herring, my friend. The issue here is there is foreign interference. Somebody, anybody, all of them should investigate it, quite frankly. But to have it turn into a political issue, this is why we get bad raps. Emily, what do you think about that? How should is called we go real. about addressing this then? Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, there needs to be an answer um, and a condemnation and a dissociation from any party 
uh, that that receives advantage from bot farming or from artificial intelligence or from any form of foreign interference. Uh, so that's why uh, I think there is a statement called from the Conservative Party. Now that this is being done, uh, I think it's helpful to to remember that just last spring, uh, Joshua Benjo and uh, over a hundred uh, leading experts in AI ethics called for a pause in the development of AI after the release of ChatGPT, because essentially, and I'm you know, loosely quoting what they say, uh, now that artificial intelligence has controlled language uh, and is getting better at controlling language, language is the key to human civilization. So if robots understand language, uh, they can make us lose control of our own society. And they warned uh, that if we do not pause the development of AI uh, in that context, unless un until until we have correct legislation to be able to deal with this uh, threat, it's going to have an impact on elections globally mm -hmm. and our democracies uh, because uh, and, and because of exactly what the, the, the kind of things that we're seeing today, we're seeing that it's very easy uh, for people to program robots that fake language that makes us lose sight of what is real and what isn't in terms of social mobilization, political engagement. And that has huge impact on how we poll and how we see who has momentum or not in an election. And uh, there is manipulation that makes essentially our electoral laws obsolete until we figured out this threat. And this is much bigger than any political party. Mm -hmm. And actually it is much bigger than just Canada. So Canada has to put its stock in a row. And I know that there has been work in the parliament in terms of trying to figure out a way to legisl uh, legislate around AI. Mm -hmm. But that's, a, that's actually an urgent global issue that, that threatens democracy worldwide. Well, certainly we're seeing some of the See, impact the of AI you and online AI. You won't be able to legislate AI. It's artificial intelligence. It's going to keep evolving itself. There's no way you can put laws around it. Because it's um, going to be continually evolving itself. <clears throat> in, if, in, in the way they say AI works. I think sure I, AI is kind of BS at the moment. Oh, uh, it's bad. Um, I mean, even chat GPT is really bad. I've asked it yeah. questions and it's given it's given outright misinformation and then I have to like fact check it and then it corrects itself. And then don't yeah, get so me started like, on the don't get me started on the images. Those <laughs> weird like fingers and shit like we're not hands? What are you talking yeah. about? My head always looks like this and has orange. What are you talking about? I, I always look like I spent a weekend in Chernobyl. Um it's like, I, I don't even think this is like ready for any consideration until it actually does improve. But mm -hmm. I feel like she kind of gave the game away a little bit there because like nobody was talking about AI. They were just talking about, you know, troll farms. She's mm -hmm. moving it to AI and then talking about like we got legislative. Look, the reality to, is... Um... They're trying to conflate the two so that when uh, down the road, they can use it for mm. laws. They'll be like, oh, AI is responsible for the bot farms. We can't use this now. They're Russia. Which is interesting because, like, good luck getting the, the, the corporations on board with not using AI because that's an incredible tool for mm -hmm. minimizing your labor cost. Like corporations are going to love that. Think of how many people they can lay off or, or I mean, in fairness, how many people they can implement AI to increase their productivity, increase their profits and, you know, decrease upkeep costs and all that. I mean, good luck legislating that because, you know, the second the corporations hear word of it, they're going to have their own say. And I'm sorry, but much like other Western countries, our governments are kind of beholden to those folks. Yeah. As much oh, as, yeah, as, much as Canada. Us. Yeah, as much as Canada has this nice veneer of, oh, no, no, no. Uh, these corporations, 
they can't interfere in our government at all. It's a, it's no, a bad they would joke. Never do that. Mm-hmm. Absolute bad joke. Um, but we'll get into that more when we get into the infiltration uh, next episode of our government. Mm-hmm. Nation right now all over the world, whether it's AI generated videos being shared in the US or misinformation fueling riots in the UK. Uh, so Lisa, to, to that point, putting the partisan wrangling aside, how much greater is that risk uh, to our next election? Just how grave is that threat? I think it's very real and we have to take it very seriously. I don't think that the commissioner of elections is the right path to go down in dealing with it. I'm not sure of exactly how many powers the commissioner is going to have when it comes to getting to the bottom of this. I do think, I agree with Cameron on one thing, that there should be a collective agreement that the parties will work together on this. I don't know how they come about and do it because of the, the heightened politicism of this, but certainly refraining from turning it into a political issue is one way to go forward. But I do believe that all of us have to make sure that the next general election, whenever that is going to be, is one that at least we have acknowledged that this could happen and put into place some fences to ensure that if we do recognize it happening, we are going to be able to deal with it and to protect our protect protect our democracy at the end of the day. I think it's a real serious issue. So, Cameron, what would a serious response look like then in your mind? If it isn't the elections commissioner investigating this, is there does this come under the umbrella of the election monitoring task force? Is there some other agency, some other body that could be invoked uh, to look into this? What, what do you think? I think well, I agree entirely yeah. with Lisa that this is a serious threat that we face as a country and as a democracy. And Emilia is right that it is a global phenomenon. It's also not new. This is not something that is just happening for the first time and we're just seeing politicians jump on one example. Grandstanding uh, in the moment is probably not the most productive approach, but I think ultimately there has to be some accountability on the social media companies too. And that's something that the government has tried to address. Other countries have managed to at least start addressing and in, in reality, I don't think we've seen the Conservative Party show any willingness to put any legislative uh, guardrails or any regulations around social media companies who have a responsibility to l- label certain content online as misinformation or as disinformation, as manipulative or manipulated. Uh, so I think that's a big part of the answer here. And uh, agreed, all parties have to work together because this goes well beyond one party, one election cycle, it is pretty fundamental to the future of our democracy and the belief and trust that people have in our institutions and in the information that they consume online. I mean, if you can't trust anything anymore uh, to be true, then it's extremely grave and extremely serious for uh, citizens to get involved and and to, to participate actively in our democracy. So a big part of this solution, I think, has to rest on social media companies. We can't trust them Mm -hmm. to do it on their own. We have to Uh, governments have to impose rules on them. It also is perhaps a little bit... I don't know about you, but that's a red flag to me. Mm -hmm. We have to impose rules on them. How come we can't impose rules on other companies? No, no, just social media. (coughs) But also, I mean, it seems like they're all in lockstep here that, you know, we have to we have to clamp down and what the red flag to me is how do you determine what's a bot what's a troll farm what's an ai um and and what is just a person who is who is speaking out about something that goes against your specific narrative that's a red flag well, i've seen already in this post there's no difference they're all like, the same like gulags and what kind of what kind of legislation are you going to put forth and how how what would that look like because you can't really just regulate bots or ai without having some people fall in the cracks because yeah. if the if the issue is like at the end of the day we have to con- contain false information I mean, look at it in Britain right now. Mm-hmm. They've got Britain is down bad. They've got like they've got the government 
essentially saying like you can you can be penalized for what you post online Mm -hmm. um and now we've got our government kind of falling into the same category here yep uh yeah i'm not liking this not liking this at all this started started, hmm? nope go ahead sorry this just started with uh is pierre using bots to to chill his campaign and make him make him look better now it's turning into like this serious discussion of like how do we clamp down on (laughs) internet content do you notice how very darker like you kind of alluded to a few minutes ago, it's a very vague statements too. And that's going to keep going. Like you even look at our laws in general. We have to follow them to a T, but they're so vague, we need to hire two people and pay them $500 an hour to argue very fine specifics over it. Whether I broke the law or not, that I'm supposed mm-hmm. to know within a millisecond of me committing this supposed crime. It, like, it, it's just not conducive to making a workable society. Yeah. Like, it's just it's... vagueness. And so it's regular folks can't really defend ourselves because when you have rules that are vague, it just makes more for the oppressor to have wiggle room to use them against you. You are spot on, sir. Also, this guy is just, I'm sorry, this man is very creepy looking. This is like some <laughs> like weird vampire sort of situation going on. If you were a um, poster of white people to avoid, this would be the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Concerning you see that white there's people no in your neighborhood like this, definitive run. Yeah. Definitive way to verify who is or isn't behind this. Uh, yeah. And so, Emily, I mean, let me turn to you for the big question I asked off the top. If this doesn't get under control, could these bot posts actually sway the way Canadians vote? Uh, yes. Um, it has played, uh, you know, Russia, it's already, there's already been a lot of in- investigation into how they played uh, a, a role in the 2016 election uh, between uh, Hillary and, and Trump. Uh, and certainly social media mobilization um, played a role there. So this is not a sci-fi conspiracy. scenario. This is things that we've seen before. Um, and that's also something that Cameron already insisted on. Uh, the only thing that I would add, um, and, and this is something that's pointing out, that's being pointed out by expert, is that through the latest development of, of, of AI, it, it's basically a lot cheaper and a lot easier uh, for, for, for people to engage in this sort of uh, nefarious activity. And so this is something that is bound to become even more than an issue uh, now with the, with the, the language and the uh, technology that we have now. And so uh, this needs to be solved. And basically, there's been a lot of experts who've called on urgent, but really urgent action uh, from the government of Canada around around legislation, not just on election. And that there's basically two things. There's election and, and foreign interference, but there's also the issue of the tech itself and um, and the development of, of those of those technologies and so there needs to be more accountability in terms of foreign interference there needs to be more accountability on platform but we also need to really uh, have more uh, of, of a of a framework around uh, people that develop technologies that can be used in a very nefarious way when they're put in the wrong hands as well uh, I've got about time did you just rush gate this did I hear that correctly Oh yeah, they totally just went straight Russia. Right Are we back to Russia again? Too. Well, and do you like, remember that denying elections is right wing conspiracy? She is denying elections right now. That's what. That's what drives me insane. They all do this. Yep. Even that's our why like, both sides are idiots. Yeah, it's like both and both sides will do it without like any kind of like self-realization I think would be the word 
the fact it's like that the she's right like wings. taken. Hmm? Well, it's like the right wings that are like, oh, the media's lying, and then we'll immediately be like, China. It's like yeah. <laughs> you you are doing the exact thing you were claiming the other people are doing. And just Yeah, it's like they both it. It's like both factions picked like a different rival. Yeah. I said this before, but it's like, okay, conservatives, you pick China. Liberals, you need to stay on Russia. Together, we'll accomplish nothing for Canadians. <laughs> It's like the old Captain Planet. When our racisms combine, we do nothing. <laughs> Yay! It's <laughs> like a summation of our com- country. I will said company, but really at this point, it's it, like... well, I mean, it's the same thing. That's why, like, it's weird. I like, I like my country and I like my fellow countrymen, but it's like I have a hard time having any pride for Canada. As like an entity. It's like, no, we, we killed a bunch of people. We stole land. We continue to help abate imperialism and killing of other people and other continents, more specifically other colors. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't get behind this idea. It's not. <laughs> I mean, we essentially did a genocide, said sorry, yeah. and then waited a bit, and then just went right back to the the genocide thing. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I mean, now it's we kind just of think funny Nazis you, are based. Yeah. Well, have you noticed the trend in people being like, you're starting to see a lot more of this. So it's like, hey, well, it comes from the like. Uh, the Holocaust denial and stuff like that. But it's like, oh, all of a sudden it's like, well, Hitler wasn't that bad of a guy. It's like, really? Like, oh, dude. Was it four months ago, or no, probably longer than that, probably about a year ago even, I was at my um, uh, brother-in-law's house and a YouTube video came on about Hitler, like a cartoon one, and it was like, the 10 not so bad things about Hitler. And I was like, that seems like a bit of a bad thing to start talking about. I remember I that. Leave it is. <laughs> I remember that insofar as, uh, <clears throat> I remember those posts where it's like, you like vegetarianism? You like uh, being an animal lover, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, congratulations. You have, same things as Adolf Hitler. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, but like, first Mine off, the whole <laughs> first off, you can absolutely be a psychopath and have those attributes. You can have those endearments. Um, there are psychological studies on how perfect uh, media example. Tony Soprano, obviously a psychopath, huge animal lover. Now, the reason why you can be a huge animal lover is because when you don't have empathy for other human beings, you have to fill that somehow. I'm 30 seconds uh, left each. Uh, Lisa, I'll go to you first. One party is in government, the Liberal Party. What should the government do? Take it seriously plan for the future, protect the next election. But isn't it funny we're talking about what's essentially a a positive tweet? I tend to get more worried about the bots farms that come after and spread misinformation. This wasn't technically misinformation. It was somebody saying they liked that they went to a rally of Pierre Polyev's. So it's a weird one to single out as being foreign interference. (laughs) Conservatives not tell on themselves (laughs) challenge impossible. We're at the end here, and she's defending. She's defending the nature of the bot tweets. Yeah. Come on they, now. They weren't mean bots. They were nice. They had. They were flags. nice. They were. Listen. They had rainbow flags in there. Yeah. Listen. I'm not concerned about the positive bots that are that are completely astroturfing the internet. 
What I'm concerned about is the ones that aren't telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> about my team. I don't care about the bots that are that are painting my team in a positive light. Oh my god. My lord. We are so what? we are we're so cooked. We are so what cooked. Someone think of the bots? The poor bots. <laughs> They're Canadian bots. They're naturally polite. They yeah, said sorry. They're very nice bots that are just trying to steal our democracy. Just a little fun game. There's where to come. Steal the democracy. And Cameron, w- w- what would you say in response response to that? As as I pointed out, the Liberals are in power. They have the ability to address this in a serious manner if they choose to. What would I mean, you like to see? This there's do? there's always more they can do, but they already have started to address this. And the online harms bill is one of the ways that they're trying to put accountability on social media companies. And I've yet to see any good faith or any legitimate attempt by the Conservative Party to show any willingness to work with. All they do is attack the government when they talk about regulating the uh, social media companies and spread. There it is. There it is. Okay. Yeah. That's 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 what this is all really about, y'all. Yep. There's nothing to do. We'll not do it now. The online harms bill, which we should cover that in a later episode. Um regulating social media. This is they're all pushing in lockstep. And they're pretending that they're opposed, right? But they're all saying the same thing. We need to regulate social media. And I think it's funny that they're saying this at a time where a lot of the narratives of Canada in the greater Western Empire are being exposed on social media. Whether it's the outright lies about the uh, conflict in Ukraine with Russia, or, I don't know, uh, the the uh, the constant barrage of videos of children getting blown up in Gaza, which we we know they all don't like. They don't like they don't like seeing that. They don't have smoke with that. But they don't want to see that while they're eating brunch. Their brunch yeah. is ruined. Can't sip it on mimosa while looking at a little tiny limb on the floor. Yeah, come on, um, have some respect. They're giving the game away right here. This is the game being given away. information about what they're trying to do. In this case, there is an attempt to move forward. There's a bill that's been tabled, and they should probably engage in good faith on that bill, see if that there's anything in there they can get behind or work with the government on. Lisa, I give you 10 seconds. I see you shaking your head. If you'd like just a, a quick rebuttal. It always has to come down to a partisan shot at the end at the Conservatives. That's all. I'm just trying to say this is a big issue. Well, it's... And this is a issue than taking partisan shots at one another and Cameron every time you talked you took a shot at the conservatives I never once took a shot at the All liberal right. government guys this is a big issue well they have we're to out of time unfortunately to together I want to thank you wish I want to thank our power panel Cameron Ahmed Lisa Rayton Emily Nicola I don't really like right. any of them but I feel <laughs> that one lady in the middle was somewhat trying to be reasonable but I don't think she's I don't think it was for real any reason, though. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing. Like it was like a At the end of the day, they're all, they're all saying the same thing. They're all saying the same thing. We got to crack down on social media. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, you got a reasonable one. You got, a, you got someone that let a little too much out of the bag, I feel. I feel like when you start defending the bots, you've lost the plot. But they're conservatives. I think it's their job to lose the plot at this point. Uh, mm-hmm. And you've got the classic liberal who's sitting here like, yeah, you know what? Like, I'm going to say this really nicely, but I don't think human beings should be able to speak at all unless we tell them to. Yeah. Like, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's such a shame because you can see what's going on and Anytime you even try to even have like a reasonable conversation with people, it gets blown out of proportion. You get called all sorts of names. And it's like, we got to have start having these conversations. Like, it's not going to go away. The, there's not no. going to suddenly all the billionaires are going to be like, ah, we're joking. We're all going to be nice now.